to a well-designed business. My name is Luann Nigara, and I'm so glad you found this podcast. Together with my husband, Vince, and our partner, Bill, we have grown our company, Window Works, from the ground up. So I know and I understand the challenges you face in running your interior design business. I also know that your talent alone isn't enough to ensure your success. So on this podcast, we talk about strategies and practical steps to help you grow your business. But make no mistake about it, we have our share of fun here too, mixed in with those aha moments that I love so much. This isn't fluff. Nobody has time for that. Whether you are a new interior designer or a seasoned designer, I am here to help you create and to manage the kind of interior design firm that you dream of. It's straight talk and it's action. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hi, welcome to A Well-Designed Business. Today, I have the privilege of interviewing Sarah Lynn Brennan. My story with Sarah started about a year and a half ago, but it seems longer than that to me because what started as a DM from a stranger on Instagram has turned into a true friendship. Sarah did DM me one night on Instagram and she said, I love your show. I love so much, you know, all of the guests and all the things that I'm learning. I'm a brand new interior designer. I'm your baby designer. And I'm thinking about going to High Point, but I'm not sure what to do and where to go. The thing was High Point was literally that weekend when she sent that DM to me. And I thought to myself, my goodness, am I actually going to tell an interior designer that she shouldn't bother to go to High Point? Now, I can't, I couldn't even in good conscience say it because I know how valuable it is to go to High Point Market. However, being brand new and in only a couple of days away, what I wanted to say was you should join Jackie Von Tobel and Deb Barrett's Soft Design Lab Tour or trying to get in the Design Bloggers Tour. But I really didn't think in three days that was possible. I didn't know if it was, but I didn't think it was. And so the thing is, I said to her, what days are you going? She said, Monday and Tuesday. And I said, all right, this is what you do. Meet me at Surya at nine o'clock on Monday morning, because Sandra Funk is going to be in a panel there and I'm going to be there to watch her. So what I'll do is I'll introduce you to Sandra and I will ask her that morning if you can tag around with her team, because this way you will be with a designer who knows what they're doing instead of just walking in circles, right? So that's exactly what happened. She spent the morning with Sandra and then in the afternoon we ran into each other and she ended up spending the whole whole afternoon and following day with me and Sarah Danielli, the CEO of My Doma Studio. Along the way, we ran into Natasha Jones, who I had recently met in Chicago just a few weeks before at Chicago Design when I interviewed David Phoenix for Kravit. And soon we were a little mini posse going from event to event and hanging out in between and talking and getting to know one another. Since then, we've become great friends. And in fact, the following fall at High Point Market, both Sarah and Natasha signed up for for my Power Talk Coaching Live event. And then they both came to New Jersey and attended Luann Live. So I've had a front row seat watching each of them build their businesses over these past year, this past year and a half. And today you're going to get a front row seat too. And you're going to get to learn for yourself all of the things that Sarah has done to really put into actions the lessons from our podcast guests. And before I tell you a little bit more about her firm, I want to say a big, huge thank you to Article.com. Article has been a sponsor of the podcast for more than 18 months now, and it is because they are interested in doing business with you. With a to-the-trade division managed by interior design professionals and led by Jillian Cross, you can be assured that your requests, your concerns, and your needs will be handled intelligently, courteously, and timely. If you'd like to get to know Jillian a little bit better, sign up for your to the trade account today at welldesigned.article.com welldesigned.article.com. And also check out episode number 367, where I interview Jillian and we talk about how she is committed to your interior design projects. Now, Sarah Lynn Brennan, entrepreneur, CEO, and principal interior designer at Sarah Lynn Brennan Interiors has become an award-winning designer and the first 
and only full-service interior design firm in Waxhaw, North Carolina, who specializes in transitional design. She and her design build team take spaces from bare bones to beautiful by utilizing her exclusive, approachable, and stress-free design process, transforming and renovating homes from start to finish. Sarah's design work has been nationally published multiple times in well-known publications such as Romantic Homes, Traditional Home, Window Fashion Vision Magazine, and Cotton and bungalows, where she is currently a monthly com- columnist. She's also been noted as a rising star in the design industry, being invited as a panelist at High Point Market, a host and a speaker on local design shows and events, and as a guest on top business and industry podcasts. You might have heard her on Wingnut Social, just saying. Okay, also, Michelle Williams, profit is a choice. Sarah's confident, unique, and fearless approach to business and design make her an inspiration to those who work with her and around her, and that includes me, and soon I'm betting it will include you too. Now, are you ready to meet Sarah? Let's do exactly that. Hey, Sarah, thanks so much for joining me on A Well-Designed Business today. Hey, Luann, how are you? I'm so glad to be here. I am too. This is funny that it's taken us this long to do it, but you see, Everything comes at the exact right time because I have been, you know, you and I've been friends for over a year. I've been very impressed while you've grown your business in that year's time. Every single time I talk to you, I hang up the phone and I go, oh my goodness, she is so brilliant. (laughs) It's the truth. And that now though, you have added a layer. We had decided to do the podcast finally, but in the interim, you've added this layer to your business that I am absolutely just enthralled with. So we're going to go right to this, Sarah. Sarah, you are a MyDoma user, MyDoma Studio user. And was it, were you first attracted to creating packages simply because it was a feature that could be done through MyDoma? Or were you thinking about creating packages and MyDoma was the, the thing that you said, oh, I can do it there, like chicken or the egg? Um, It was definitely my DOMA really kind of talking about the package feature. And then I started to think, how can I use that to my benefit? And I started kind of grouping things that I was already doing into design fee packages where I know some people in the beginning were kind of creating like the bed in the bag, Mm -hmm. uh, like a room DIY um, kind of e-design in the package. And for me, that was never the goal. I didn't want to sell something that I just designed and that I thought somebody would buy, even though I do think that works for some people. For me, it was how can I automate what I'm doing in the best way possible. So, cause for a very long time, it was just me and I was trying to make it easier on myself. <laughs> okay. So, so the thing is, and this is why this struck me is because we had Wendy Wallace, Chuck, our friend Wendy on the show over a year ago. And, and she was, I don't even believe that she's doing the whole bed in the bag packages any longer, but that was how she put her toe in the water and yeah. started to do it right. And really started to play around with the features. And I thought it was brilliant. I loved what she was doing, but I think she's even moved um, through and onto other uses for the package feature. And 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 truthfully, I haven't followed up with her. But you and I happened to be talking recently, and you shared with me a huge win that you yeah. have a package that is a full service luxury package for six thousand dollars, and in a consult, you you had a client buy three of them off the bat. And I went, oh, we are on to a whole nother animal here, (laughs) folks. This is not selling $200 paint consults. This is a really, you have really taken, and and believe, forgive to anybody out there, Wendy included, that is doing the same thing, but you're the first person that I personally was aware that was, had figured out a way to actually package that full service concept through my Doma Studio or any other way for that matter and successfully keep that branding of the luxury design but really do it through this medium. So so tell us about that one particular story, Sarah, and then I'm going to go back and break down 
why it is that you're able to quantify your packages because I know it's because your systems are so tight. So start with just that one story that you blew my mind with two weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it, it, start, it kind of blew my mind too because um, I've always had the packages and we've already always had these um, sort of little chunks of the art design process that we hired out or we were hired for on an hourly basis. And um, so I started thinking about this in a different way a long time ago. And um, so I basically finally put pen to paper and I typed it all up and I put it into the computer and I was a little bit nervous to publish my rates and really kind of put every element of what the client was going to get from me online. Because I know that it's possible that somebody could steal it or, you know, take a look at it and, and just get inspired by it. But for me, it wasn't about that. I don't even mind if that happens at this point because I'm, I'm really comfortable and we're in such a groove with the way things are working that, um, it's there for me and my clients and anybody else who needs to see it. So I published, um, three different tiers of our design packages. Um, and so one of two of them are basic and luxury DIY design. So it's basically a glorified e-design, but a little bit further than that. And then the other one is the luxury full service. So I had a client call me up and so we went over for a consultation and we walked through the space and I got to the end of the consultation where I usually explain, you know, this is how it works from here. And they said, oh, 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 we know, we know you have two types of packages, DIY and full service. We don't want that DIY. We want nothing to do with that. We cannot handle this ourselves. We're way too busy. We already have looked at your full service. We know we want that and we want that for three spaces. So go ahead, write that proposal up and we're ready to go. <laughs> Eighteen thousand dollars, like, cha-ching. Yeah. And I said, uh, okay. Like at that point, I felt like they knew my packages better than I did, because <laughs> <laughs> I I was just like, oh my gosh. And my assistant and I couldn't even make eye contact because <laughs> we were just like, holy crap! Like that just worked. Like we just published these, and we kept them under wraps for so long, and now it's just like, bam. And then, um, like another week later, I had a girl call me, and she said. Uh, I want I want to do the DIY design and I said well that's great and she was in Pennsylvania and I'm in North Carolina so it was going to be you know remote thing and I said so we've actually just rolled out this new luxury DIY package she's like oh yeah absolutely that's what I want and I want it for three spaces <laughs> and I said okay and <laughs> take so three like, both of them were just like bam and I I think I wrote on the website and I'm not sure that if you'd group it if you group the spaces into three. I'll combine some of the fee because I'm I don't have to procure as much if it's um, you know not just one space at a time. Like it's just I can combine some of the hours for that. So um, I don't know if they were coming up with the three or if everybody just had three spaces <laughs> that, that they wanted done in that week. But it was just so amazing to have that validation because I think a lot of us are really afraid to share our rates and put them that out there. But for me, it was just like, no, this is exactly what I need to do. Well, and the thing is that the secret sauce of this is that you'll, you'll need to go to Sarah's website. So Sarah Lynn Brennan Interiors. Sarah? Yep. It's okay. just sarahlynnbrennan.com. Okay. sarahlynnbrennan.com. You need to go to her website because the, the reason why she is having this reaction and the reason that people are self-selecting where they want to be in her service and have really come almost to their conclusion of I'm going to buy before Sarah even walks through the door is because under each of your packages, you're so specific about the deliverables. It's not like, uh, and by the way, I have been looking at websites for three and a half years now, and I have seen designers describe their ladder of services to use Nancy Ganza-Kaufer's language, right? That yep. where they'll mm -hmm. say luxury design, you know, this, that, you know, blah, 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 whatever the different levels are. And you'll find sometimes five or six bullet points under each one. And, you know, I would say for the most part, when I have found that information on a designer's site, I would say 80, 75, 80% of the time, I have felt like that it was well done, that I had a great concept of what I would get 
in that package. Now, I never felt like I don't have any questions. I never felt like I understood the whole thing, but I sort of, as a, a consumer, got it. When you mm -hmm. look at what you've done, there's no gray area. There's no. absolutely no gray area. It's like, it's really, you know, you and I use the example of we've, we've talked before and you've, you said to me, I just don't understand but back in the beginning when a whole year ago, when you were only in business for a year, right, Sarah, right. <laughs> we had that conversation back in the day. Yeah. Back in the day when I was the baby designer, you know, a whole year ago, but it's funny, Sarah, cause it feels like that to me. Your growth mm -hmm. has been absolutely jet fueled. Okay. You are really yeah. on fire. You really do your things. And I do remember walking around, you know, the property of my townhome development here in and out of the streets and having a conversation with you. And you're saying to me, Lou, I listen to the show. I know I'm supposed to have my 10 steps or my 12 steps, but it's, I'm still in circles. Like I feel like I'm not able to control the process and I'm losing, you know, losing control of the process with clients. And there's a point where they're coming back to me and saying, why didn't you this? Or why didn't you that? And we talked about it. And I said, Sarah, tell me what your 10 steps are. And you told me, and I said, okay, tell me all the steps under step one. And you're like, wait, there's steps under step one. Yeah, forget. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and of course being in business only one year, that was completely acceptable answer. But you remember, what did I use? I used the mowing the lawn example, yeah. right? Yes, right? yes. That really drove it home for me. Right. So tell them the mowing the lawn example. Well, yeah. I mean, so you made me realize there's just so many systems in our lives and you made it as just a very clear, simple example is we have a guy that comes over and mows our lawn once a week. The first time he came, we had to decide, you know, is he bringing his own lawnmower or is he borrowing mine? Do we do it in a pattern or do, do we do it in stripes? Do we do the front yard and the backyard? Does he trim it? What does he do with the clippings? And so I realized that like, that is a process. That's and right. When I started thinking about all of these things that I was promising my clients, and then I really didn't have a solid way to make sure that I delivered on all of those. I was just carrying this like giant mental load in my head all the time. I was like, what? No. And so the packages just became so clear that if I lay out to you what you're going to get, then I have a way to hold myself accountable. Right. It's like a checklist. You Yes. And that's what we started creating was all these different checklists for ourselves, for our clients. And so we created this little timeline and we have a little leaf as our logo. And as they move through the phases of each of the design processes, their little leaf travels along with them. Mm. And so the client gets this little visual of where they're at. And then we have it in the office too, where we know where they're at. And if that leaf has been sitting in one spot for too long, it kind of just feels like what they're going to feel that too. <laughs> Move you know? the leaves. <laughs> yeah, got to keep moving the leaves. And um, maybe I got that from your little lawn mowing example. <laughs> <laughs> but it just really gave us so much clarity when we had to really put pen to paper on what exactly we were going to deliver. Right. The packages gave us clarity on what we were promising our clients. And that just ensured that they were getting what they wanted every that we promise them every single time yeah i love it because the thing is you know if you think about it each of you listening if you think about it any single task that you give anyone in your company to do whether it's yourself or a an, an employee it to the example of the lawnmower is think about you're the boss of the lawnmower company and you're like say to you know joe go mow the lawn at 52 smith street so mm -hmm. it does, it starts with, well, do I have a truck to transport the lawnmower? Is it a driving lawnmower? Is it a walking lawnmower? Like there are a thousand little things. It's not just mow the lawn. And so it's exactly the same with your firms. And what I love is that when you heard that analogy, Sarah, you are one of the people that goes and then takes it out of the notebook and makes it an action. And you did, you sat down and I it was the beginning of last summer. And by the time I mm -hmm. saw you at high point and you did the power talk Friday tour, um, yep. one day coaching event at high point, by the time you came, it was like, who is this girl? Like it was amazing, <laughs> the transformation. But to your point, I think what it is, is 
when you got really clear on how do you mow the lawn and really wrote down all the steps of how do I do a kitchen renovation? You know, mm -hmm. the, I can't even imagine. There must be 90 steps in that for crying out loud, right? Mm -hmm. Just having yes. the appointment for the presentation. It's how do you need the samples? Do you need the boards? Do you need the hardware? Do you need the stain? Like, blah, 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 right? And when yeah. you really did that for each thing, so what it sounds like to me is, now you're in my doma you start to hear my doma studio not only the um employees the staff that run my doma studio but also your co um, designers in the group talking about packages and is it where you turn around and went huh i'm so finite here in what i do and it's not public but it is our internal document for getting everything done but i could chunk this and put a price tag on that and then create a package and then that is a sellable item. Is that how that happened? Well, I, I had those thoughts, but then I went to Luann Live and I sat down at a table with Sandra Funk mm. and she said, um, stop with the hourly rates. And that was one thing that I was like so annoyed by. Like I'm not that organized to track my work on an hourly basis. I just, mm. I just jump around from 30 different things. Cause I'm a mom and I'm a, you know, I, I just, I'm not good at that. That's not my strength. And no matter what tracking device I have, my Doma has the time tracker. I'm still not turning it off or I'm not turning it on. And it's just like, right. You know, it doesn't you're work you're for forgetting. Me. Right. Yeah. Yes. And so I found myself like, Oh my God, if a client calls me and asks me, you know, specifically how many hours did you spend on X, Y, and Z? I, I didn't have a way of proving that. And so it was just getting really hairy for me and, and scary. And so Sandra said, stop with the hourly rates. And then I heard a couple others like I'm um, Toby Fairley. And she's talked about the different packages that can be done on a luxury level. And so I started thinking, I can do a flat rate. So the designer that works with me, Lila and I, we sat down and we looked at our projects and we said, no matter what the size of the projects, we spend about this many hours on the front end, this many hours in the middle of the project, this many hours on the installation phase. And so we kind of used our multiplier, um, our hourly rate as a multiplier to kind of come up with this, this flat rate fee. And um, so we historically looked at all the projects that we'd done, where we could improve on, where we could cut time, where we could, you know, divide and conquer. And that's where um, between the process of looking at how we did it and then how much time it took times the hourly rate, that's where everything came together. And it was just like a few people in the industry that gave me that little nudge, whether it came from your podcast or from an event that you've done that kind of put those people in front of me and in my ear that said, Sarah, it's okay to do it this way. Mm. And then I did it that way and it started working. And I was like, Jesus, I should have done this a long time ago. <laughs> so, um, you know, it was just, it was just so awesome to have, you know, when you have an idea, there's a lot of fear, I think, to, uh, when we talk about pricing and, you know, how to do it and is this the right move to make and should I invest, you know, probably 40 hour week into typing this up and putting it on my website, you know, is it going to work? Is it going to turn people away? But for me to get that instant validation, like I did, it was just so rewarding to know, yes, that's the way it's, it's supposed to work for us. Yeah. I, I love it. I think it's great. And the thing about it is, is this isn't a uh, commentary on flat rate is better than hourly. It's a, oh, it, no, no. no, the commentary is what's right for you. And, and, and to your point, if you were consistently struggling with monitoring and tracking the hours efficiently, then it's, it's an anxiety level that you don't need if, like you said, you had the way through it and to hear somebody like Sandra Funk and then Toby Fairley, you know, very successful, you know, interior designers say, you don't have to do it that way. And then it just gave yeah. you the, the confidence to say, okay. But I love that you still came up with, of course, everybody knows you come up with your flat rate based on your, you know, in the hourly investment. And the thing about it is, is I can see that as somebody that's at your stage of life where you do have little children and you have a husband and you know you have an assistant and you are going to switch hats we all switch hats throughout the day but where i'm going to spend my day alone all day i'm you know it's it's different
And even the days that I might have one of my granddaughters where I'm babysitting them for the day, it's, you know, okay, it's 10 minutes of work and it's two hours of playing blocks and then it's 10 minutes of work and then it's two Mm -hmm. hours of wiping noses. You know, it's different. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? It's just different. I just, yeah, because I'll take, I'll jump in the car and go get the kids at preschool. And I, I, you know, I've heard a lot of the guests on the show, you know, say that that's really important to them and that that of course validated that for me too is because I really wanted to be there on some days to get them and Mm. I wanted to make sure I was always at the the concerts and baseball practices and whatever the case and I can't make them all but um I think that for me it was just I felt the most comfortable on a flat rate fee structure. Now we still have consulting hourly rates. So you can buy a consulting package, but I just ask as you buy it in chunks. Right. So it's basically the similar concept, but in smaller chunks. So, and there's no real deliverable on that. So I'll go shopping with you. I'll go to the tile shop with you. I'll do, you know, whatever the case may be. But, um, so we'll still do hourly if that's what people want from us. And there are times where that works, but most of the time we found that our clients want a budget for us in the beginning. So they want to be able to know what it's going to cost them to have us in their life during their renovation. And then shortly after that, they want to know the cost of the project. So it is our goal to ask for design fee once to ask for the project, um, or to at least present the project budget another time. And then after that, there's very little left to pay for. And they really like that model because they're invested in the project and I'm not asking them for money when they everything's like, you know, anxious and they're waiting and they're tired of waiting. Um, we really try to take care as much as we can on the front end so they know exactly what it's going to cost. And then we kind of proceed from there. Okay. So I like this. Okay. So let's dig into this a little bit. So for example, describe to us the $6,000 package that this particular couple said, you know, we'll take three. So what, where, what are they getting in the $6,000 and d- do they pay it all up front? Like walk us through a little bit. So t- walk us through that exact conversation. They say, we want this package. What did you say next in order to set it up? So it would work well. Okay. So I, I have, um, a whole series of events that has to happen if you want to talk to me. So the very first thing you have to do is book a discovery call and that's free. Um, it takes about two weeks to get on our calendar and that is, um, free to the client, but I do make them invest some time in that because out the gate, I need to know that my clients are serious and they're not just trying to ask me something they could ask me over Instagram, like what paint color should I use, um, you know, on this space or whatever. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to be in the office and putting my time into a discovery call, I need it to be something you're serious about. So the questionnaire that they get right out the gate is takes them about 20, 25 minutes to do. And so it's not an investment in dollars, but it's an investment in time. And that is strategically done. And, um, the questions that we ask in the discovery, I mean, in the um, questionnaire are things that are going to give us the information we need if we get hired for the job. So for example, uh, we're asking them, where is your favorite place to eat? So if I am doing a kitchen renovation, part of my process is at this certain point of the kitchen renovation and they haven't had their kitchen for two weeks, I'm going to bring them a gift card to their favorite restaurant and they forget that they told me that. Oh, and that's cute. Um, yeah. And then like, we'll ask them, you know, what, what type of music do you like? And so when we play their design presentation, it's that type of music. And, um, You're so, so it's smart. <laughs> it's, it's all the information I know I need, which used to be a surprise, but now it's not a surprise anymore. Cause I wrote it all down. And, <laughs> and so they're just, and it's fun because they think I'm just asking them like these random questions. And sometimes I ask them the same question twice, like at what level of design do you think you want from me? And they'll say, Oh, I just need some mentoring. I just need some help. And they say, what is your budget? A two. And then they'll say, uh, what service do you think you want? Oh, full service for sure. <laughs> like, 
sorry, you're confused. So, um, let me let me clear that up for you. Right. But so it really just helps me to like get to know them. But I'm also taking that information so we can get further faster once I'm on the phone with them. So they do the discovery call and then we do a consultation and they book all that through the website. These are all different packages. Um, and so they I get out to the house. We look at the space. And at the end of the consultation is usually where I start talking about where do we go from here. And so that's when I brought up to them. There's two different ways you work with us, DIY or full service. And so they said, we already know, you know, and that's when they get Gave us the spiel. And so after each consultation, we write up a very thorough and detailed consultation report. So we bill for um, a consultation with us is $400 and we're there for one hour. And then we spend about an hour outside of being in front of these clients writing up their report. And so um, Lila, my designer and I will sit there and we'll discuss everything we feel like they might need to know to proceed with this project if they wanted to, you know, just stop it at that consultation point. We want to give them a lot of value Mm. there. And then if we also want to say, okay, but if you want to hire us, you know, here's the proposal. And then we'll also send, um, the estimate with that. And so they already knew that this time. And so I just sent them the design, the consultation report with the invoice for the design fee. And then we'll schedule another appointment to make that payment, go over all the letter of agreement and the terms and conditions, and then we'll get them started into the design plan. Okay. So when you say to somebody, you can go from here with full like okay so when you say you give the report and they have everything they need if they want to continue on their own without you okay yeah are you are you doing um like what we've been talking about on the show recently where you're gonna say it, we walk through your living room your living room needs a tv a rug a sofa a this or that a la 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 look for a rug that's eight by ten look for a sofa that's you know 90 by 36 look for a tv that's you know 65 inch look for you know two chandeliers you know blah 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 or are and you don't you don't provide an image or a picture or a mood board you just give them the specifics of the nuts and bolts that they could walk into any store and say does it fit this criteria or are you giving them you know this retail rug because I think you're doing do at DIY. What do you, how do you do oh, that? No. Yeah. So we'll just say, um, yeah, this, this, this needs to be painted in a, a lighter gray color. And, and so we'll, we'll walk through each space and there's a page for each space. So if they want to show us three different spaces, we'll walk through and say, you need to, um, you know, change out the furniture, change out the light fixture. If I were you, I would look up this particular type of style, this particular um, kind of rug. If you're going to be Googling something for this space, rustic transitional is kind of the style that I think you should Google and really kind of set them up so that if the consultation is enough for them, that they have the, the information to be able to take that and find that really useful. And then if they, you know, from the discovery call, I kind of know what they're wanting because we talk about that on the call beforehand. So sometimes I know that this consult is a stretch for their budget, you know, just getting me out to their help. They want their house. They want my advice. They want some help, but they know they can't hire me. And sometimes, you know, they'll just say that flat out. And now that my pricing is on the website, the phone actually rings a little bit less because uh, I'm not getting people who are tire kickers anymore. You know, they know what I offer. And if they don't fit into that, um, you know, they, they don't call as often anymore because I've put it all out there. Right. But um, so I just find that during that discovery call, I get a lot of information about what that consult's going to be like. And so I will give them information or if they, if there's a space that they don't, they flat out say, Sarah, I'm not going to hire you for this. This is like down the road in two years, but I want to update this powder room. What would I, what should I do? Mm. Then I'll say, you know, you need to change out the light fixture, paint the walls, a light gray color, and then, um, you know, do this and that, add these towels or whatever. And, and usually that's enough for them. And they get to email me back one time if they want to, with any questions I left out of the report. But most of the time, I'd say 90% of the time, they're focused on where do we go from here and what design package do I want with Sarah to to go forward with. 90% of them are not 
content with that consult. So right, right. In other the, words, you will do it, but it is literally leading into the next level work for the most part, but you're giving them, you're not doing a bait and switch. You're giving them enough option and opportunity to go on their own. But, you know, just like we all know, we, you know, we think we want to do it ourselves, but we really don't. We want no. somebody to do it. And so the thing, what I love too, is because your packages are so clearly enunciated that even if somebody were to say to you, so let's do that powder room example. So simple, lighter gray mm-hmm. color, change your towels, you know, do whatever you said, blah, blah, blah. Right. That's yeah. For you as a designer, that's pretty easy. But for us as consumers, it's like, well, lighter gray like this one. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like these kind of towels, right? Right. And so mm-hmm. as soon as somebody wants to push back and say, oh, thanks so much for that suggestion. Could you pick the paint color for me? You know, you have your package of hours. Is that what you did in that point? Do you just go, okay, sure. Did you want to proceed with just the package of, you know, whatever hours it is so that I can do, find these things for you? How do you handle that when they push you for just this? little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I'll say I just flat out offer, you know, two or three different package options that would work best for us to get to that next step. But it's, and that's why it's so great that it's pretty cut and dry. Now I have about 10 options to work with me. And, um, so I'll just send them a link. Here's two links to packages that might work best for that. Um, and, and, you know, we'll just see what you find is most beneficial for you. But what I like about it is that, I am not telling them, quote unquote, that you can't afford us, like per se, which I feel like, um, you know, I wanted to make design approachable because I feel like for a really, really long time, design was like only for the extremely wealthy. Mm. And um, so I know that there's a larger middle class than there is for than those, um, you know, one percenters up there that we all want to work for. (laughs) But um So I knew that if I had a package that made it approachable, that I could offer that to um, more people than just doing. And and so we kind of thought of it that way is if I can offer you something where you are the one deciding which one you want there in the driver's seat. And then I don't feel like I'm selling, you know, pick the one that you feel like fits your budget best. And if you need me to explain, and if they fall on the floor and they're like 6,000, are you kidding me? Then I can literally show them that list of everything I'm going to do for them. And I say, why would you do this project? Why would you do this renovation once? You don't know what you're doing. You have to work. When I do this a hundred times a year, every single day. And Then that starts to make sense for them. And it starts, you start to see, you know, you're doing a hundred thousand dollar renovation. The six thousand dollars, like, yeah, like, are you, you know, are you serious about that? So, just protecting um, your investment, right? Yeah, yeah. So, Tori Alexander said last week, or do you remember that? that. Yeah. Yeah. And so it just really puts them in the driver's seat. They classify themselves to which package works best for them. And then I can really just serve them the way they want to be served. And that really, really works well. You know, I have to say that I know, Sarah, that you listen to every single episode. I do know that, right? <laughs> so Multiple times. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, you know, I have to say, I think that of all of the designers that I've spoken to, you have figured out what I have been imploring designers to do is to make it understandable for those of us that don't do it. And I don't, you know, and the thing is, and I've never really, I'm never really a hundred percent sure if I have effectively communicated the message, but I have to say it must have gotten through because I know (laughs) if you're doing it and I know you started listening to this podcast, right? But my, my point of it is, is that it's, it's been hard for me to describe I take it from like every single one of us. We take everything from our own viewpoint. So I'm the host of this show, yes, and I am open to ideas and I'm open to learning and I'm open to new concepts every single day. But I still am often filtering it through my viewpoint of being exactly who I am, which is a consumer that has a somewhat you know, level of expertise 
in the design industry, right? Mm-hmm. So when I say that, of course, there's window treatments and absolute expertise and own it. But for design, you know, not really. Kind of, you know, I, I can pick a color and I can pick a sofa and I understand scale and proportion. So I'm like your basic good good design enthusiast in that way, right? Yeah. So mm-hmm. more experience than an accountant, but less experience and knowledge than a designer, right? But the thing is, in addition to that, I also have these other cross pieces that are part of my particular viewpoint, which I am in my mid fifties. I am not interested in doing things myself anymore. If it's not something that I either A, enjoy or B makes me money or is fun to do. And I got news for you. Interior design doesn't fall in any of those categories for me. <laughs> I don't enjoy it. <laughs> doesn't make me money to do it. It's a lot of work. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, nah, right? And so the thing is that I love the specificity of when I come to your website because even though I've been in the industry all these years, I, you know, you really don't know how a designer works. You really, and and I know that people say, oh, people always think designers are trying to rip them off. And that's processing that statement from a design standpoint where you know in your heart you have, there is the last thing you want to do is rip somebody off. I know that, right? But Mm -hmm. when we on the other side can't wrap our brain around what you do and how you're going to charge me for it, maybe a, a, a glass is half full person describes that as you're trying to rip me off. Whereas me, I've just described that as, I don't think I can give you my money because I'm not sure how you're going to spend it. Like, I just don't get it. It's not clear. And if it's not clear, I'm out of here. You know what I mean? And that's what I love about you because what happens is it's not just entry-level consumers that don't have extra income to spend on design that want to know how it's clearly done. Yes, you have the one percenters that are accustomed to just writing a check and turning it over. And by the way, that doesn't mean every one percenter is going to do that. Let's be serious, uh, right? right? Yeah. Exactly, mm-hmm. right? But maybe they're, they've grown up with designers and their parents and it, they're more inclined to understand like, you know, you get your teeth, you know, cleaned by a professional, you get your house designed by a professional. It's part of their DNA, right? <laughs> But the thing of it is, is that, you know, we, this makes it, I cannot impress upon all of us out here enough how this, what you've done, Sarah, makes it so that even somebody that has reached a stage in their life where they are willing to pay good dollar bills for design still appreciates it being quantified and specified for exactly what you're going to get. And you're doing it at the luxury level. And it's remarkable. I love it. And you're in business. It's, is it two years? It's going to be three years. It's going to be two years in October. (laughs) (laughs) It's insane. It's insane. So it's, it's, it's really cool. So here's the thing. You have these all, like you said, all these different packages. So just for a second before, give us the difference between the luxury DIY and the, what is it? The basic luxury and the luxury, give us the difference between your two high level ones, just so I, we understand what oh, they okay. give up before they have to pay the next level. Okay. So for us, styling is really our superpower. So again, you know, you ask me to figure out what my only is. So I try for a long time to figure that <laughs> out. And I realized that, um, we, I really love the styling part and a lot of designers don't like that. And, um, so we, we really, really want to do that for our full service clients. And so what we realized is that with the full service, we're going to take you from bare bones to beautiful. You're going to come home. And as Mrs. Paranjape says, the candles are lit, the music is on and you get your moment. Um, that's our full service. So very start to the very finish. Um, then we came up, we, we started finding that there were clients that uh, like to style themselves or they um, they they needed the furnishings, but they didn't need the whole reveal element or they didn't have the timeline to wait on that kind of stuff or they wanted to do it in phases. And we just really couldn't serve them because that was not luxury, you know, and I didn't want to offer a luxury service um, to somebody who didn't want it per se, because then I was spending a lot of time and they weren't valuing it. Um, So we came up with this luxury DIY, which allows you to basically get the same exact design plan that we would give to a full service design client, but we stop there. 
So we come up with the extremely detailed, um, the color story, the floor plan, the textile plan, the light plan, the electrical planning. You know, we have a page for each of those in the packet and we send that off to them with the measurements, the fabric selections, um, everything that we would do if we were going to do it for you. And we give that to them so that they can execute it themselves. And that even includes a local resource list of places that they could probably go and find those things. So if it's a local client, we know that locally. If it's a client who's uh, remote somewhere else, then um, we will try to find resources for them to execute those jobs where they are. And um, so really it just it cuts it off at the purchasing phase, which I also heard some peers tell me that after the client got to the design plan, they stole the design plan, went about all the furnishings on their own, and then it, you know, it was so devastating. But for me, I was like, you know what? If I was paid up into that point and sure. I handed over this design plan to them and they wanted to go do it on their own, if that was the agreement from the start, I'd be cool with that. Right. So um, I wanted them to choose that from the out the gate, that they were going to get that and execute the plan themselves, as opposed to our full service clients. They don't lift a finger, you know, right. to get it done. Right. Well, and I love that, too, because I have the same feeling on that is that if you are paid to that point. What, where's the love lost? As long as it's an agreement going in, understood if somebody has agreed to do full service and then mid uh, process in the middle of your executing the procurement, procurement phase, they want to renege and change the agreement. Well, there's something that's been un, undone in the leading of that project that puts you in that situation in my mind. But that's a different story than I paid you for the design. Thanks. See you later. And, mm -hmm. and the thing about it is it's, it's to me, it's like if I go to a restaurant, I could either have, you know, a hamburger and fries and a glass of water for five bucks, or I can have a two hundred dollar meal but if i walk out and i go get dessert across the street is that any skin off your nose like right. what's the difference <laughs> like yeah, you know what i'm saying like exactly. i didn't buy dessert from you i don't have to eat it here it's none of your and, business <laughs> and i've definitely been in that place you know and about a year ago um there was a, a client who we just we couldn't i couldn't get them to pull the trigger and we could we weren't um, it wasn't going where I wanted to, it to go. And I didn't really see an end in the project. So I think there's times where, just like you always say, you know where it fell apart in the mm. process. Like you can pinpoint where you could have done better. Mm -hmm. And that happened to me a couple times where I was like, nope, I'm not doing that again. I'd rather quit than deal mm -hmm. with this. And I know it's my fault. You know, I know it's my fault that I didn't set that expectation for them that this is how it's going to go. Right. So that's why when we bill, we, we take the full design fee up front. Mm -hmm. And, um, so, and, and for some that might seem like, wow, that's a ton of money for, um, you know, a, a three space, you know, $18,000 for the, the full service if you're doing three spaces. But honestly, if, if you don't have $18,000 accessible to be able to pay me that to get started, how are we going to design a full service room with all these furnishings and three different rooms to get us, you know, to put us in the price bracket we need to be to get that done. Exactly. So Good point. of course, you know, I'm, I'm not going to, if, if they need to pull money out of, you know, whatever, and it's going to take a week or two, you know, then we'll just postpone things until you have the funds right. or, you know, like I'm not, I'm not like the devil woman here, but, <laughs> um, but I've had learned that I really don't pick up my pencil to do anything design wise until I've been compensated for it because, um, it's just part of the process. It's how you order, uh, you know, your, your window treatments, you put a deposit down, but right. when you order your furnishings, you put a deposit down or you pay for it in full and then you wait. Right. And that's kind of the way that we want to run our, our, um, firm too. That's great. I have a question. So when you say, um, when you are, I know there must be times, Sarah, where somebody says, I want to do the service up to the design point, and then I want to go and find it on my own. But then they probably get the list sometimes, and they're saying, and how much more to have you do it? Could we just keep going and get the next package, right? That's, right. That happens, I'm sure, right? Yes. Yeah. And so with our, both of our DIY packages, we have another package called DIY with the option to buy. 
And so we will allow them to purchase. We will purchase on their behalf with a minimum order of five thousand dollars if they, uh, if that's how they want us to do it. And we will order everything for them just as they see it in the design plan. And we will have it coordinated and delivered for their very own install day. So we will hold all product until it's ready to be delivered. They have the recipe in front of them, so they know where to tell the white glove delivery guys to put everything because I've already mapped it out for them and then they can um, you know style it however they want to so we have that option the DIY with the option to buy because we know that our clients see that list and they get overwhelmed and they're like whoa so for you to do it this is you know all I have to do is just keep going with this process and and do that and I say yes um, and then, of course, if they decide that they want us to style and do all of that, then you just pay the difference to get to the luxury full service price point package um, to to add in that end component for them. This is the, this is what's so genius about this. Everything you have taken the time, as I said at the beginning of the show, to get very clear. We first we need a truck, then we get a lawnmower, then we take it out of the truck, and then we decide how what pattern we're going to do. This is what you've done with every system, and by taking that time to do that, this has enabled you to chunk it out and it's like oh just like you said in the beginning y- pick which one you want it used to mm-hmm. like, i hate to say it, you're sounding like me just pick which you're a grown-up which one do you want i don't care if you don't take the other one it's a it's a right. free country you want right. option to buy great but option to buy doesn't mean that sarah sits here and takes everything out of the package and puts it together you have the plan mm-hmm. put it together oh you want sarah to do it great keep buying keep going mm-hmm. next down that's the next service it's awesome yeah. and the only question i have in there from a technical standpoint is when you provide somebody who is already decided that we are just going to do your design services, Sarah, thank you so much for that. And give me your list. And you said it's a detailed list of the textiles and the yada, yada, yada. Does that mean that you are, I know you said you're going to tell them you can get it at local sources, but that must mean that you're not sourcing trade for them. So, Ah. right. So how are you, because you're, you're talking about elevated design here we're not talking about those you know like affiliate links where you're ordering stuff on wayfair right you're you're talking about tell us about it so it depends on the package but i am sourcing trade um for the basic diy design we are saying that you need to get a 90 inch performance fabric sofa that has a track arm that has um, bench seating with two cushions and whatever the case In the picture of the one that we're showing you as the concept of the design, that is a trade piece. So at that point, if they say we want the DIY with the option to buy, that is the exact one they're going to buy from me. If they see if they see that plan and they're like, yeah, I can totally do this myself and they decide to go to Bassett or rooms to go or whatever the case, they know they need a 90 inch sofa with performance fabric track arm. And that eliminates the need for them to talk to and mess with half the salespeople on the floor who are going to sell them something that they don't even know what their space looks like. Right. And I do. So I've created this design for you. And so when they tell you, no, rolled arm is fine. No, it's not. Not for this design. So they have the ingredients to pick out, you know, an ivory Krypton, you know, performance fabric, this from Pottery Barn. Okay. Um, You know, if, if they want, but with that, with the image they're seeing in their design is the trade option that they will buy from us. So we don't source them any retail. If that's the perk of doing the DIY with option to buy is because you get to access our trade resources and vendors that you won't access on a retail level. And sometimes actually just depends on the the merchant. We're less expensive than somewhere than like restoration hardware or somewhere. I mean, I, I just can't even tell a client to go anywhere near that building. But if I know they're a client that wants to go there, you know, I will advise them on that and I will show them a comparable that we can offer them that's better quality and usually less expensive. So they can't just say, all right, out of this whole package, I'll take just that one sofa from you. They have, they have to be five, right. Got to be a minimum of $5,000. And we just, that kind of for us was like, for us to, 
knowing what we have as our margins um, and what it would cost to, you know, for us to handle that project for them, that was our minimum. It may go up over time. It may go down. You know, I'm not sure. But for us, we wanted at least that amount. For it okay, to be so what you're saying is if somebody has that thing and now they're like, oh, I really like the one that you put in the room, but I'm going to do the rest of my own. Mm -hmm. If they need $20,000 worth of furnishings and, and lighting and la la la, as long as they order five from you, you'll execute whatever five, you know, whatever that adds up to. Okay. Yep. Well, we can phase that out for them too. If they just want to do the, the sofa, the two accent chairs, and maybe a couple window treatments, and then they want to they think they can handle the lighting on their own, right. then, you know, we'll do that part too. Or if they call us back and they're like, actually, we went to the lighting store and that was horrible. You know, can we do another five? Then we'll, you know, we'd do another five. So okay. it, it really is just a way for us to kind of create a plan because we had clients like that who would say, I want to phase this out. My husband's only going to do, you know, 20,000 at a time. And, and, you know, I have to respect that for, mm. you know, for some people and it, you know, that's just the way it works sometimes. Sure. And, um, so I found myself in those particular situations, I was like reinventing the wheel. Cause I'd come back to their house you know, four months later and they'd be ready for phase two. And I'd have to like refresh my memory and go back into the design and like figure out what we were going to do. But with this plan that I created and they bought, then I already know exactly what the plan was and what we're sticking to and what we're going to buy in this phase. And it just made it really clear and really easy for them to know, okay, to get the next phase of product, it's going to cost this amount of much money and uh, we'll do this you know, after we get our next bonus check and right. it just helps them out too. Okay. I love it. I, I think it's amazing. And then last thing that I want to just make sure that we touch on is you shared with me when you do have one of the, one of your package is, I guess it's really truly e-design, right? I mean, it's truly, yeah. e whether they're next door or they're in four states away, you have that, that level. What does that package cost? And tell us a little bit about how you execute it and how, what I want to make sure you share is how you present it. Mm -hmm. um, so both of our DIY packages can be e-design. They're basically a glorified e-design, but for some reason I don't like that term at all. Mm. So I call it DIY design. And so with both of those packages, with our DIY designs, our clients don't get access to what what we know is our superpower, our styling. So we still wanted to find a way to impress them with that, um, even though we weren't going to be able to style their bookshelves. So we came up with this way to package up their DIY design to kind of ensure that we could control the way they were going to get their reveal. So um, my, my fear is that if I send somebody a DIY design and they're in line at Target and they open up my email and just glance at that PDF and they're like, oh, whatever, you know, I've had a bad day and I'm tired and my kid's crying and I just looked at it and, you know, I'll look at that later. Mm. That I didn't want, that's not what they paid for. They paid for a beautiful design that, you know, I, I just wanted to impress them because, that's just, you know, how we like to do it is with our styling. So we decided to actually mail our DIY design packages to our clients. And so we came up with this beautiful white box that has this gray folder and everything's on brand and it's wrapped in twine. And so they open it up with this and um, there's like a little sprig of greenery. So if you look at my designs, it kind of goes along with my logo and they open it up and it's on really nice paper and it's just an experience for them even though they didn't get that aha HGTV like reveal <laughs> moment that our full service design clients get, they still get that little like, oh my gosh, you know, right. moment that it's pretty and it's beautiful and it's, you know, what you paid for. It's not just an email with some, you know, work I did in the office last week, right, you know, right, right, and right. I just felt like that, that kept us on brand and kept the level of luxury that we wanted it to have. I love it. I love it. Is it something that um, on this on your Instagram stories for the day of the show, you could do a little video showing it? Do you think? Oh yeah, absolutely. Right? Wouldn't that be fun. fun? Yeah, yeah, that'd be really fun. Yeah, I would love for you to do that. I appreciate it. And I also think on the day of your show, one of us has to put in our stories your son. 
<laughs> this, this, I don't know whether to brag about this or to be embarrassed about this, but I, we listen to it. I have a three-year-old and a five-year-old, and we listen to your show so much. <laughs> they know you by name, and um, they, my son knows the whole <laughs> intro to the show. It's straight talk, and it's action. Are you ready? Let's get started. <laughs> And I heard I'm him saying that one day, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, you have to say that again, so I can record that and send it to Luann." I tell you what, I have it on my phone still, and every once in a while, I just play it. And there he is. And he's, this was last year. He's four years old. This little voice with the little accent that four-year-olds. It's straight talk and it's action. Are you ready? Let's get started. <laughs> It's awesome. Oh my gosh. I mean, uh, I've heard other people, you know, say that their kids know it too, but yeah. mine are so young and they've been listening to it for two years. I swear <laughs> they won't even need to go to business school <laughs> by the time they get to college. Like they're going to buy osmosis alone. They have to have learned so much already. Oh, it's so funny. You should just start calling me Aunt Luann to them. So when we finally, I finally meet them in person, they'll just be like hugging me and I could just be like their buddy. <laughs> oh, they'll know your voice. That's for sure. <laughs> Oh my God, so funny, it's so funny. funny. Oh my goodness, yeah. Sarah, no, you're like the testament. poster child. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah no, you're you. the poster child for the podcast. You truly are. <laughs> thank, you. thank you. I mean, it. I know where I would not be if I didn't have it. So it has been the biggest blessing for me. I mean, truly, honestly, every person that I've encountered because of the podcast, every risk I've taken, every lesson I've learned. It's all come back to you, Luann. So thank you so much, so much. Well, I have to say, I, I appreciate you too, Sarah, so much because there, you know, from the beginning when you would comment and say different things, it always helps me to hear the way you guys process it. And so that it may, helps me to know what's missing, how I have to go further into something or, um, you know, just the parts that go over my head or by, or right by me. So you have been as helpful to me as I have been to you and I appreciate and value that right back at you mm, well thank you I re- thank you <laughs> I don't believe that but <laughs> <laughs> well it's true so anyway I love 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 your packages there were you know at least half a dozen things that we could have talked about today but I really just thought that this was so enlightening and you know the the reality is is it's the looking at your website when having the benefit of the conversation that the real light bulb is going to go off for your peers and your colleagues listening. That's the truth of it. I know that to be true. So I'm going to see you in high point again in October, 2019. And we are going to have you on a panel discussion with Wendy Wallace, Chuck and Don Massenberg design incredible, Mr. Incredible. And the three of you are going to be in a panel. I'm going to moderate it sponsored by my Doma studio. And we're going to dig more in into, you know, the nuts and bolts on the things that are in your packages, each of you and how you're creating them and how they are helping you uh, operate your business at a higher level. I just, I I said it during the show. I love that it's, it's, I'm all for the making money while you're sleeping. You know, somebody buys a, a paint package on your website while you're sleeping. Somebody buys anything. I'm all for it. But this Mm -hmm. was a nice way to have you as a businesswoman incorporate some, um, efficiency and process and, um, you know, just value in a systematic cart type way but still hands on with that luxury ex- full service experience. You're not leaving anything off the table. You're just really making it easier for people to understand without even um, talking to you yet if they feel like they fit in your business model. And that's the, the best and most amazing thing ever. Yeah, it, it, it's been a game changer. So that's for sure. But I also if, if I could just say one more thing, I don't want to make it sound like this was an easy process for me. To... <laughs> we should have talked about that. Yes. Um, you know, just briefly, just, I mean, I have a whole notebook of, you know, what I thought my process was, then I tried to execute it, and I left out a million things. And, um, you know, just and each time I finished a project, I would add to it, I would um, do it when I was a good in a good mood, I would do it when I was a bad mood. And um, it just really it was that 
cultivation of all of those notes that I had to go back through and highlight and figure out, okay, you know, this is this package. Okay. This is this package. And, um, so it doesn't, it's not something you're going to bust out in like a two hour session. And, and maybe if it's a, a smaller package, you could, maybe your consultation package, you could do that. But to get to this point, it's, you really have to do some soul searching and how, how you're going to do it and what are you promising your client? Because I wanted to make sure that I kept my word and I wouldn't, that meant I needed to remember what I was telling them mm. and promising them. Mm. So that's where for me, the package really just laid it all out there for everyone to know, right. this is what I'm going to do for you. And so it was, it took a long time, many mo- months of me pulling all of this together, but it, it definitely paid off and it's worth it. So um, that would be my advice. <laughs> I, I love it. And the thing is, it's it shouldn't be overlooked or, uh, you know, swept under the rug because you are the CEO of your company, Sarah. You totally are. You are. I know for a fact that you have a full day with design and children and you intentionally put the hours into your business. I get the text at 1030 at night with the questions. <laughs> But, you know, and I love it. And I just think to myself, this kid doesn't stop. You know, you're just always trying to figure out a better way to do things. And yeah. to your point, it is a lot of hours. You, you you know, no one is advocating that anybody work 14 and 15 and 16 hour days. But the point is that you find the time every single week. I'm absolutely firsthand aware that you find the time every single week to work on your business as opposed mm-hmm. to just busy and getting by and, you know, being you know, either slightly frustrated or very frustrated and just feeling like, well, it'll have to get better somehow, some way, I guess. And it's no, you put the brakes on and you put the work in. And so I, um, you know, witness to that firsthand. And I, I, I think that's awesome that you do that. Well, thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad you noticed it because <laughs> it is definitely a, a labor of love. This, this website, these packages, everything I do, but I am obsessed. I, I, I know this is, what I'm supposed to do. So it just keeps calling me. (laughs) That's great. Well, that's what it is too. You're very connected to what you do and you have value in it and purpose for yourself, which gives you the juice to do it. And that's, you know, what we wish for everybody that we know and like and love that they're, they're in their space, in their superpower, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And that these packages can help with that once you take the time to do them. So I'm glad to have shared my experience and have some actual proof in the pudding to say, you know, it's not just a good idea. Like my clients know my packages better than I do. Mm, Awesome. Awesome. I love it. Well, thank you, Sarah, so much for coming on. I appreciate it uh, so much. And I can't wait to see you in October. Yeah. Yeah. Can't wait to see everybody in High Point. Love, love going there. Sarah is many things. The first is that she is a true hashtag baby designer who has been listening to the show from the very start of her firm's launch and like so many others who have come on the show to share how listening to the podcast has spurred them not only to believe in themselves and their dream of running a firm, but it's given them the tools and the information to do exactly that. Sarah joins the ranks with Darla Powell in Miami, with Kelsey Gross in Canada, with Kimberly Kay in Arizona, and with Meg. Megan Moulton in South Carolina. Each of these designers have shared on this podcast the story of how listening to the podcast was such a great help for them in getting clarity and getting their businesses up and running. So if you need more inspiration for getting your firm up and running, go to the show notes for this episode where you will find links to these other episodes. The other thing that Sarah is is she is quite truly a person of action. She doesn't just wish for things to be better. And she doesn't quit when things are difficult. And she both seeks advice and she takes advice. (laughs) This is the part I love, okay? And she owns the responsibility for running her business like a business. And that's really, really awesome. The third thing is, as I said to you, she's become my friend, which so often happens when we meet in person and I get to learn about you and your businesses and your challenge. That is really the fun part for me. You know, I'm absurdly extroverted and insanely curious. So meeting you at a live event is pure joy for me, just like this friendship with Sarah has become 
pure joy. Sarah is both a hashtag baby designer and a hashtag smart lady all rolled up into one. And if you love learning about the packages that Sarah is creating with My Doma Studio, I want you to do two things. First, go to mydomastudio.com slash a well-designed business and find out how they can help you organize your services and make it easier for clients to buy from you too. Then come to our panel discussion in High Point on Monday, October 21st, 2019. We'll be at Surya at 10 a.m. I'll be there with Sarah, Wendy Wallacechuk, and Don Massenberg, Mr. Incredible. Each of these designers are killing it in their own way with packages, and I'm going to pick it apart for you so that you can see if positioning your services in this way might be right for you too. One more thing, I have a special surprise for you. Sarah is now blogging on my blog. That's right. Go to LuannNigara.com and click on the blog tab and there you will look for a new feature, the diary of a hashtag baby designer. Sarah will be sharing more of her journey, how she has taken the advice from so many of our guests and put into action. These posts are outstanding compliments to the podcast episodes that she mentions, and I encourage you to read them and see what aha moments that Sarah's insights might unlock for you. Okay. The first post is up there and others are going to be coming out every single month. So go to LuannNigara.com and check it out. Now be sure to follow Sarah on Instagram at Sarah Lynn Brennan. Alrighty guys, that is it for today. There's lots in this episode. I hope you are taking notes. Please do follow Sarah over on my blog because she is going to share more of her th- uh, the lessons that she's learned and I'm quite sure that it will help you too. All right, make a decision. Any one little decision will do today. Any one decision that just unlocks something, moves a needle, you know, gets you in a new direction, just something, just one thing, decide, decide to be excellent. Thank you so much for joining me again today. This podcast is a production of Window Works, your resource for custom window treatments and awnings. To learn how we can help you on your next interior design project, go to www.windowworks-nj.com. And if you're interested in working with me on your business, either through masterminds or one-on-one coaching, or you want to know how to get my book, The Making of a Well-Designed Business, or you just want to know what's going on in the podcast land, and where I'm going to be. All of that is found at luannnigara.com. Thank you so much. Have an excellent day.